Hi friends! Today's video is in response to being tagged by Taryn from Vegan Cafe YouTube channel. I will put a link to her channel below. She made a video answering some questions about her vegan journey and she tagged me and my channel to answer the same questions. So I am going to go through and give the answers, although some of mine are pretty similar to Taryn's. But I thought it'd be fun and let you know a little bit more about my story, my vegan story, I guess. So the first question is, how long have you been vegan? I have been vegetarian on and off kind of throughout my life. I was raised by hippies and my mom was always on some sort of diet. So sometimes we'd be sugar-free, sometimes we would be vegetarian as kids. She was always on some sort of kick, that's where I get it from. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, I definitely have been vegetarian on and off different points in my life. I remember <clears throat> in my 20s for well over a year at a time, I was vegetarian. But anyways, right now, where I'm at in my life, vegan, I have been since January 1st, 2013 so about four and a half years now it'll be my five year vegan anniversary in January of 2018 this coming January <clears throat> and the full year of 2012 I was vegetarian so in most recent times I definitely have not eaten any meat since back in 2011 that's how long I've been vegan Question number two is, what do you miss about before you became vegan? It's kind of a tie for me. Cheese and baked goods. Being able to just go to any sort of sweet shop, ice cream shop, and get anything that has, you know, dairy, eggs, cakes, cupcakes, all of that stuff. Now, the world is getting better with vegan versions of those. But I, you know, lots of places, especially smaller towns, it's pretty hard to find vegan desserts. So I guess, yeah, I thought I was going to say cheese, but vegan desserts. <laughs> or just being able to eat any regular desserts is probably what I miss the most. I definitely have a sweet tooth. I inherited it from my dad. And I miss being able to have any kind of dessert on any menu or at any shop. Question number three, what was your aha moment? I don't, I was thinking back and maybe it's because it's been almost five years for me um, that I don't, I can't remember any specific aha moment. I think I just started studying the health benefits of a plant-based diet with a lot of the vegan doctors that are out there, Dr. McDougall, Dr. Esselstyn, uh, Dr. Campbell, read the China study, I started just reading all of this evidence and my background is scientific. Uh, I have a degree in chemical engineering and I've just kind of always been a bit of a scientist and reading all of the proof and all the published papers and studies that have been done and the impact on your health, I guess it's the link between a plant-based diet and health. That was my aha. I, you know, I'd like to say it was some bleeding heart animal moment, but it wasn't. It was more a science-based, this is the best route to health and looking good, feeling good. I have kind of always been on a diet and reading diet books my whole life. So always kind of battling that extra, you know, 5 to 25 pounds. I get that from my mother, I think. <laughs> They always being on a diet and reading diet books. And a plant-based diet is really the route to go. A clean, whole foods, no oil even plant-based diet, which I am not perfect with, definitely not perfect with. And I'm not at my perfect weight. But anyways, that's probably more of my aha moment. I did start learning about factory farming and animal abuse, and it didn't take much of that to really push me over the edge and just kind of dovetail into, oh yes, this is the way to go. It's the way to go for my health, for the animals, for the planet. The environmental statistics are staggering. 
and what we're using, all of our land, all of our fresh water, uh, the damage that's being done from factory farming, all of that information, it just all, all the facts, the statistics, the studies, they just keep stacking up in my scientific brain and it all comes together. It's like the best way to eat for your health is also the best for the plants and the animals. So all of the evidence came together for me, but the health link was the first one for me. Question number four, what is my favorite documentary to recommend? Would be Forks Over Knives. I have definitely recommended this to plenty of people People in my family, people who have taken classes that I used to teach on the health benefits of a plant-based diet, Forks Over Knives really gets at the link between a plant-based diet and your health and reversing disease. It's really eye-opening and anybody who is struggling with all of these afflictions of Western society, afflictions of a rich diet, such as heart disease, type 2 diabetes, even cancer, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, all is all linked to what we're putting into our mouths, <laughs> which is mostly not good in the Western diet these days. So Forks Over Knives is my most recommended. Another documentary which stuck with me, and I wouldn't say that I recommend it, but I do tell people about my experience, is that I watched the documentary called Beducated, and I cried and cried and cried and cried through that documentary. And that documentary didn't even really directly show the animal cruelty footage. It showed people who were being educated or beducated about what really happens, and then their reaction to it, and I just, I remember just crying through that. And I know there are other ones that get more into it, like speciesism and um, cowspiracy, maybe. I don't know. I haven't watched them because all it took was vegetated, which didn't directly show hardly any footage, but it did show animals... Um, as the beautiful thing it beings that they are and it showed people who had been eating animals and their reactions to when they saw the facts so yeah I don't know that that's one that I would recommend but if anybody specifically wanted to know from me you know something that could help them go vegan or help them understand the cruelty aspects of factory farming vegetated will do it <laughs> So those are two documentaries that definitely had a big impact on me and I recommend Forks Over Knives a lot. And the new one, new one that came out that's very similar to that called What the Health that everybody's watching now gives, gives a good punch and gives that same message about the link between your health and what you're eating and how a plant-based diet can cure and reverse a lot of these lifestyle diseases. So What the Health is a current documentary that's pretty darn good too. Uh, question, okay. Question number five, what can you not live without? I guess that as far as any <clears throat> food item in my current vegan diet, I'm not that specifically attached to any of that. Like I'm perfectly happy with rice and beans and tacos and potatoes and, you know, a lot of just staple whole real food, salads, chickpeas, stuff like that. So I wouldn't say I'm attached to any food. What can I not live without in my current healthy plant-based lifestyle would probably be kitchen tools. My pressure cooker, my Cuisinart pressure cooker is just saves me so much time. I can cook dry beans from scratch. I can save money. I throw together curries, soups, stews. I'm going to be doing a lot more videos for y'all where I'm cooking with my pressure cooker, especially when we get into fall and winter. But my Cuisinart pressure cooker is one of the things I can't live without. I'll put a couple links down below if you're interested in getting yourself one. One of the best kitchen tools you can have. A rice cooker is another thing. 
I we cook so much rice like I said I'd be perfectly happy with rice and beans and a little hot sauce for half of my meals so we use a rice cooker and I'll also put a little link to that down below if you're interested in the type that we use but those are some things that I can't live without in living my healthy plant-based lifestyle. It's probably kitchen tools that make my life the easiest. There's probably more but those are the two big ones that I can think of that I use almost all the time. I used both of them yesterday. We are cooking from the pantry just had house guests for a while. I'm needing to go to the grocery store again, and I threw together a delicious curry with mung beans, lentils, and then I cooked some basmati rice. So I used both the pressure cooker, pressure cooker, and the rice cooker last night for dinner. Awesome tools. Question number six: Favorite vegan YouTubers. I'm going to give a shout out to Vegan Cafe who tagged me in this video. Taryn has been great. She is one of my early followers and subscribers to my channel and she watches my videos and comments and it just makes me feel happy to have active subscribers like her. And Lou here in Memphis, she's commenting on my channel a lot. Love having you both. Other um, vegan YouTubers that I really love are High Carb Hannah. High Carb Hannah really got me into YouTube. She got me watching YouTube and now I watch it, I think, more than I watch TV. <laughs> and she has a new channel, High Vibe Hannah, which I also love. I love Janae Claiborne of Sweet Potato Soul. She's awesome and does great recipes on YouTube. And this... Um, pair of Irish twins. These guys are Irish and they're called the Happy Pair. Ah, they have the best uh, vegan YouTube channel. I love watching their stuff. So those are some I can think of off the top of my head. And the last question, question number seven, who was the biggest influence for you becoming vegan? The biggest influence for me becoming vegan, I would have to say, is Dr. John McDougall. I was reading his books. I was trying to lose weight. I was trying to find a sustainable, healthy way to lose weight, feel good, clean up my diet. And Dr. McDougall's books, his website, which is absolutely chock full of information about the health benefits of a plant-based diet and using it to reverse all sorts of diseases. His website is fabulous. It has thousands of recipes on his website, but his book, The Starch Solution, really could be my Bible. If I were totally eating clean, ideal weight, it would be following the starch solution way of eating, and it's a delicious way of eating too. And I believe it was through Dr. McDougall that I started finding books by other similar plant-based doctors, The China Study um, by Dr. Colin Campbell, um, Dr. Esselstyn's Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease, Dr. Neil Barnard's Prevent and Reverse Diabetes, all that type of information I just love. Like, I should have been a nutritionist instead of a chemical engineer. <laughs> I really should have. But I would give the credit to Dr. McDougall, pushing me over the edge for vegan, healthy, lifestyle. So there are my answers to the questions. Taryn, thanks for tagging me and I'm happy to share a little bit more about my vegan lifestyle, where I'm at today, and information that I have found useful in the past. I will put links to a lot of these things down below, friends. If you like my videos, give a thumbs up can subscribe down below. I put out new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And I'm hoping to get out another cooking video for you all. Cooking or restaurants. I don't know what I have in store. Uh, for my next video on Friday. Alright, bye friends.